introduce our featured speaker for today. Please welcome the chairman of the Owasta Chamber of Commerce, Dr. Chris Kelly. Doctor? <laughs> Is way too tall. Thank you, Gary. Good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to introduce today's featured speaker. Warren Lear has held the position of Owasso City Manager for the past two years. From 2009 to 2013, he held the position of Assistant City Manager. Prior to that, Warren worked for the City of Owasso from 1993 to 1999 in the capacity of General Manager and Director of Golf and from 2007 as manager of golf and parks. Warren attended Norman North High School, I'm sorry, Norman High School, received his bachelor's degree in communications from Cameron University, and has completed 70 hours towards a PhD at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. He and his wife, Nina, have been married for 34 years, and have two grown children, Kara and Allison. Please help me introduce our speaker, City Manager Warren Lear. Warren, I'm coming behind you. I'm going to take okay. from you. You got it. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> You know you're getting older when you've got to bring a clock and an extra pair of glasses and to the podium. I actually had uh, a 25-year retired district judge yesterday uh, said, uh, excuse me if I'm looking at you a little different or a little longer. I didn't know where he was going with that. But um, he said, you look like my dad. And he had to be 60. <laughs> I said I'll take that as a compliment because I'm sure your dad was a wonderful man but um, <laughs> thank you for being here and, and uh, we want to kick this off with a, a one minute video. Wassel Character Council and Ryland Russell. That's a one minute preview. I think um, we can uh, count on the fact that the sound will probably work uh, at the uh, Character Council luncheon on October 13th. But uh, uh, a little preview to, to what's going on there. I hope you'll come. I had an opportunity to hear Jay Wilkinson speak this week. He's an outstanding speaker. I, I am curious. Uh, he mentioned that maybe 50% of the room that he was speaking to uh, possibly wasn't familiar with his father, Bud Wilkinson. Uh, would you be willing to admit it if you're not really familiar with who Bud Wilkinson is? I'd rather go that way than have everybody raise their hand. Anyone here in here not really familiar with who Bud Wilkinson is? Okay, a couple of people that have lived most of their lives out of state. Okay, not too many. Um, no, I didn't mean that disrespectfully, but people that came from other places. Uh, you know, as, as Gary said, Jay Wilkinson is uh, Duke University All-American. He's in the Duke Sports Hall of Fame. His dad, though, is Bud Wilkinson, the legendary OU football coach uh, who won uh, 14 conference titles 
titles in 17 years, three national championships in 1950, 55, and 56. Uh, but he's probably most known for his teams winning 47 games in a row. And there's another streak where they won 31 in a row. But 47 games in a row as a football coach is pretty incredible. So thank you for being here I, uh, and supporting the Owasso Chamber. I, um, you know, just realized that... Um, you know, 15 of, my wife Nina's back there, 15 of our last 22 years have been here in Owasso. And if we throw in our time in Bartlesville, over half of our married life has been here in Northeast Oklahoma. We certainly count at home. Um, it's been a pleasure to serve you as city manager for the last couple of years and prior to that in other positions. I, I want this group to know, I, I've told other groups, but I want you to know that I consider this position, as I hope you all do, it's very much a servant Position. I am here to serve you, to serve the council, as the council is also here to serve you as their, as your elected officials, those of you that live in Owasso. Um, if, you've, if you've thought about that upside down pyramid, if you've ever heard of that described as a, a type of leadership where instead of the CEO of, for instance, your organization being at the top of that pyramid, you flip that upside down and you're at the bottom. You're supporting everyone who works in your organization. You're trying to give them the resources and the coaching and the ability to do their job well and be really good at what they do well. So I want you to know I, I've got no problem in a service position. We're going to do two things today. First, we're going to look at um, a vision for Owasso. It's a vision that you've seen. I think it's your vision. We're going to talk a little bit about what makes Owasso good, uh, what makes Owasso good great, what makes it unique, and then we're going to look at um, uh, how, it can, how we can fulfill that vision even better and be better. And then the second part, we're going to do what uh, I know everyone's here for, which is to uh, look at some of the progress that we've had over the past year and then look forward to see what's going on with Owasso. But for this first part, um, I want to get started with a warm-up exercise. The way this is going to work is we're going to show a famous quote, and then uh, you tell us who said it. Now, I love quotes, so you got to bear with me here, but I want to start off with some easy ones. Will Rogers, Will Rogers great. You got the idea. <laughs> Political season, another easy one. They're going to get a little bit harder. <laughs> Yoda, okay. <laughs> Star Wars, Star Wars fans in here, everybody's ready for episode seven, The Force Awakens, December 18th. I'm not that big of a Star Wars fan, but my oldest daughter really is. Uh, Yoda said that. Any coaches in here? I know Coach Newton's here. Lombardi, Lombardi said that. Vince Lombardi. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt is correct. This is one of my daughter's favorite quotes. Eleanor Roosevelt has some wonderful quotes. Just, just Google Eleanor Roosevelt quotes. She's got many gems. You know that one? Truman, you got it. One of my, one of my personal favorites, Harry Truman said that. You can accomplish. And this one, it's a great goal, great quote. Benjamin Franklin said that. Uh, if, if that's something that if, if we could all have as a goal. It's not an easy goal to make good on. It is not an easy one. Speak ill of no man. How about this one? <laughs> Somebody with a staff probably said that I said that. I wish I could take credit for that. But no, it's uh, in honor of Yogi Berra who passed away last week. What about this one? We talked about coaches. I'm going to give you a hint. Anybody know this one? I haven't heard. It's probably, the, in my view, the best leadership uh, quote of, of all time. Leadership all about helping others to achieve their own greatness by helping the organization to succeed. John Wooden said that. Winningest college basketball coach of all time. How about that one? Another tough one. The the no, the uh, the uh, being blind. That give you a hint. Hel Helen Keller said that exactly. Well, I I love I love quotes. The reason I love quotes is they are time 
honored wisdom of highly respected people. And these quotes actually become the legacy of, of those that, that say them. The, the, uh, uh, especially this last one. I want to talk a little bit today about sharing a vision. Uh, again, I think it's your vision. Uh, I have a unique seat of service with the city of Owasso. And I'm going to have to change glasses here. I have a unique seat of service with uh, the city of Owasso, and it gives me the privilege to, to share a vision with you. Um, and this is a vision that's, that, I've, that I've spoken with our, our city councilors and our city staff. It's one that they embrace. I think it's going to give you something to think about. Um, the reason I say it's your vision is because one of my duties is to uh, listen and observe in my service to each of you. And if you were here uh, last year, um, you saw this on the last slide. If you were paying attention, you just now saw it at the end of the video. So without further ado, here it is. We're going to talk about Owasso, real people, real character, real community. To share what we mean, I want to share within the framework of a model. It's a model that I learned uh, about 30 years ago as a, now I've got both classes up here, I don't know which one I'm going to use. Uh, I learned uh, about 30 years ago, it's a, it's a teaching model, and it's a, a model for how to teach golf. But I've run into this model again and again over the years. The way it works is there's certain physical laws that govern where a golf ball goes. I've got the golfer's attention now. Everybody's listening for a tip. But there are certain laws that govern where the golf ball goes. It's the, at the uh, important point of contact, that's, that's where all these laws come into place. The laws are face, which way is the face of the club looking, path, what's the horizontal path of the golf uh, club, and angle, what's the um, vertical path, what the angle, and then finally speed and centeredness of contact. Those are four or five inviolable laws of hitting a golf ball. Building on those laws are the first causes. What do the old coaches say? We mentioned coaches. They say, let's get back to the basics or the fundamentals. The building blocks of, uh, that you want to build on are the fundamentals or the principles. And there are certain principles you've heard, many of them, keep your head steady, keep your left arm straight, keep a consistent r radius, transfer your weight, whatever the case may be. Um, but those are the principles. And then finally, we run into the troubled area of preferences. People have a lot of different preferences for how they try to accomplish those principles. Sometimes their preferences work, oftentimes they don't. When we stray too far from the principles into preferences, uh, we, we find, which pair of glasses? We find that, we find that they may work sometimes. I've got a, a, a story on that. I was um, in New Mexico giving a golf lesson. Actually, my head professional was giving a golf lesson, and the gentleman was hitting shank after shank, top after top. He either topped it or shanked it. If you're a golfer, you know that that's a shot that just dribbles off of the tee and to the right. And um, my head professional was having a difficult time with him, so he said, hey, can you come help us out? So now we've got two PGA professionals helping this gentleman, trying to get him to understand the principles and fundamentals. And he stopped and said, but you don't understand, that's, that's not the way I like to do it. This is the way I do it. I like to do it like this. At that point, I was so frustrated. I, I actually did tell him this was a, a high point of frustration in my life. I said, well, then you need to just keep doing what you're doing if your preferences uh, are, uh, they're going to get you what they've always gotten you. You're going to have to, and I left. Um, so, uh, it, it, I was as frustrated and tongue-tied with him as I was just now. Um, but, so our preferences get us in trouble. But we run into this model more often than you would think. Um, the, to make the transition to life today, many of us value preferences, opinions, prejudices, feelings and emotions, wants and whims. Um, sometimes we value our privileges over the principles. And many would say that we have become a nation of, of, of a privileged people uh, and not a principled people. 
great quote by Dwight Eisenhower sums up the premise of my vision that I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, I would hope to say our vision, your vision. This vision takes us back to basic uh, fundamentals, principles, accepted truths and laws because what uh, President Eisenhower said, General Eisenhower, a people that values its privileges above its principles soon loses both. But first let's talk about the real part of real people, real character, real community. Real is everywhere. You hear all these sayings, keeping it real, be real, for real, really, yes, really. Unfortunately, we use real and really all the time. Just this week, I read uh, Carrie Underwood. She's got a new CD. It's about real people and real stories. Um, uh, I heard a radio commercial about a real banking experience just this week. Last night, those of you that know me well know that I like to watch reality TV. And the reason I do, and my wife and I do, is because we actually get to see, I'm not talking about the contrived ones where they stage everything, I'm talking about things like Survivor and Big Brother, those, those shows that really have redeeming value. <laughs> now, <laughs> but truthfully, truthfully, the reason I enjoy watching those is because they actually put normal people on camera and they know that the whole world is going to hear what they say and they say the most confounding things. It is unbelievable. It gives us insight into the way some people think. It reminds me back now, I'll age myself, to Art Linkletter. You know, kids say the darndest things. Some of you are shaking your head. Now you're showing your age. But adults nowadays say the darndest things but we use real and really all the time and it's it's kind of sad because we have to use it uh, to let others know that we're I, I'm being truthful I mean really this is real I, I'm telling you the real truth so in terms of laws principles and preferences what do we mean mean by real people First, I want to talk about the law of equality. July 4th, 1776. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Not in kind, but in value. I realize we're not all the same. In a moment, we're going to talk about that. It's Thomas Jefferson who said, There is nothing more unequal than the equal treatment of unequal people. So, in your workplace, we do have to treat people differently. But in value, we're all the same. As I told a group of employees the other day, and I had to ask afterward, does this mean anything to us? There's nobody in this room that's better than anybody else in this room. It's sad that we have to say that, but we've gotten a long ways away from this, this law of equality, this principle where we respect one another and really believe that regardless of your title, regardless of your ability, regardless of your job, regardless of who you are, you're, we're all equal in value. So that's a pretty well accepted uh, truth, I would say, of, uh, in America. It's, it's an accepted axiom. It's been called one of the best known sentences in the English language uh, and the most potent and consequential words in American history. So uh, the, the uh, principles, moving on to the principles, I think we can all agree on that law. law. The principles, individuality, starts with personhood. To get the respect that we want to have for one another, we've got to understand, and, and this is sad too, but we've got to sometimes pause and say, that person I'm talking about, that person that I am tempted to vilify because they don't agree with me, they are a mother or a father. If not, we know they're a son or a daughter. They may be a brother or a sister, but we know for sure that they are either a son or a daughter. And the, the, the principle of, of personhood uh, starts with individuality. Now, the key to individuality, the point that I want to make is that time-honored advice that if your mother didn't give you this advice, your grandmother did, be yourself. Be yourself. Be the best you that you can be. The idea of real people and expressing our individuality and our unique gifts and talents and abilities is what can make us great and we have to respect that in one another. The plague of our time is a lack of authenticity or a phoniness you might say, the misrepresentation of who we are because we're trying to define normal and be normal and be Facebook normal and Facebook admired. 
And the fact is, we're not that person that you see on Facebook, and they're not either. And we have kids that are growing up depressed because they don't get to do the things or go the places or get the praise that their friends and sometimes our friends get to do. So uh, too many of us want to be someone we're not. These Facebook page personas are not real. Secondly, respect. You know, the Pope has talked a lot this week about respect for human dignity. And he's talked about some of these other things. I'm going to talk about unity later. I, I told someone the Pope's stealing all my thunder uh, for, for this week. That doesn't sound quite right. But um, it's indicative of the fact that these things need to be discussed again. We've gotten away from some of the truths and the principles and gotten so far into opinions and, and preferences and prejudices that we fail to recognize the value of the individual. Uh, we've got to get to the point, we want to be in Owasso, a people that respect what do we say about people that we don't quite figure out? Well, he's a little different. Well, he's, she's unique. Well, that person's a little quirky. We need to figure out what it is about them that makes them quirky, individual, and unique. Embrace that and, and celebrate that. Moving on. Uh, a couple of great quotes. The first one on individuality. Uh, and that one, we're not going to ask you who said that. So you can go ahead and... And that's Judy Garland said, always be a first-rate version of yourself instead of a second-rate version of someone else. Uh, Judy Garland, I think, lived a, a, a troubled life, but she said something fantastic when she said this. Always be a first-rate version of yourself instead of a second-rate version of someone else. And then the deepest form of Soren Kierkegaard, the philosopher, the, uh, the um, Swedish uh, philosopher and theologian, the deepest form of despair is to choose to be another than oneself. Um, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Eleanor Roosevelt also said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Uh, this is pretty simple concept, this first, this first uh, um, concept of, of real people. It's very simple. We need to embrace and share our individuality and our uniqueness with others, and we need to respect and embrace others' uniqueness. So when you've got real people with respect for individuality of self and others, that leads to real character. Now this is perhaps one of the best examples of laws, principles, and preferences. I've, I've told this story before, but not to this group. Uh, how many are familiar with uh, Stephen Covey's book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? How many of you know that the Library of Congress subtitle is Restoring the Character Ethic? Part of the subtitle of this book was Restoring the Character Ethic. This is a 1989 copyrighted book, but Covey was well ahead of his time understanding that if we do don't, don't do something in America to restore character, we're going to be in trouble. He relates in the book that all success literature from uh, 1776 for 150 years focused on a character ethic. It focused on um, things like integrity, humility, fidelity, temperance, courage, uh, industry, simplicity, modesty, and the golden rule. These are things that Ben Franklin and others set as high standards. But in the last 50 years, in contrast, success literature from the mid-30s uh, forward uh, was very superficial. Now that success literature in deference to those authors, people like Dale Carnegie who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People, people like Norman Vincent Peale who wrote The Power of Positive Thinking, they were assuming a foundation of character, but these books took off with superficial techniques and quick fixes, and success became more a function of personality and skills and techniques. So this is a great example of where we got away from laws and truths and even got away from principles into techniques and skills instead of true character. So the first law, the law of relationship, we talked about this a lot last year, but um, it's pretty well accepted that we, not only are we created equal, but we're designed to be in relationship with one another. It does not work when we're in isolation. Uh, character does not exist without other people. And it's in those relationships that character can come out. Character is exemplified in caring about others. 
Let me say that again. Character is exemplified in caring about others. If you don't care about others, character is not important. I don't have to worry about our character if we don't care about others. I, since I was about 20 years old, I've said that life is a journey uh, along a continuum, along a pathway. And we go from birth completely selfish. We, there's no choice. We, 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 we need help. It's all about me, 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 mine, mine, mine. And we live life along a continuum and we're all at a different place. We go from selfishness to selflessness. As we go through life, we learn that it's, it's about some personal sacrifice, some giving to others, some helping others. Side note, our character program, I just want to say this. Uh, Gary says it well, we are a city of character, but we also get a lot of criticism for being a city of character or having a character program. Just on a side note, what that means is, is not that we have better character in Owasso than, than others in other cities do. It doesn't mean that as an organization, our city organization has better character. It simply means we are willing to raise a standard that none of us can probably meet and pursue that standard to encourage improvement in character traits. I have a different one every month. Um, got to complain about the banner that's up right now on dependability because it says something about sacrifice. And I couldn't remember the definition and I was listening and I said, well, you know, they changed definitions a few years ago and some of them were a little uh, deference and tolerance. Some people don't appreciate those, those concepts. But it was just about, the, basically it said, willing to do what it takes to get the job done. Sometimes that's a personal sacrifice. It's a sad state of our society that someone would say, well, I'm not going to sacrifice. It's telling me to sacrifice. I, that my rights tell me that I should never have to sacrifice. So that's kind of, you know, where we are. But that's our character program. It's simply to encourage character. And again, I urge you to put October 13th on your calendar and go to the, the character luncheon. Principles. Principles here are communication and reconciliation. We need to communicate with less social media, less texting, less Facebook messaging. I have a, a fairly close family member who um, um, sadly was, uh, was notified that their one-year marriage was breaking up and, and that was done by text. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, it, yeah, it's almost humorous, but uh, <laughs> Not so much for, for, for our family, but and this is not in my immediate family, but it's just, it's heartbreaking to think that um, uh, someone would be so uncaring as to do something like that. Reconciliation. You know when we relate to one another, um, we're not always going to agree, and there's got to be some flexibility and uh, some forgiveness. There's two great quotes on this. The first one on communication. It's an interesting story. How many of you have heard of Joseph Priestley? Not a lot. A few from the city. We, we uh, were encouraged to read a book a couple of years ago that I'm just now starting on. But Joseph Priestley, an interesting man. Um, he was an 18th century English professor, political theorist, uh, very much a renaissance man, a chemist, a scientist, a theologian, a philosopher. He's actually credited with discovering oxygen. But the interesting part of the story is that you may be familiar that Thomas Jefferson and John Adams had a 14-year period of correspondence where they wrote 165 letters to one another. And in that corpus of letters, Ben Franklin was mentioned five times. George Washington, the father of our country, was mentioned three times. Franklin and Adams, or excuse me, um, Jefferson and Adams' mutual nemesis, Alexander Hamilton, was mentioned twice. Joseph Priestley, on the other hand, an Englishman who spent only the last decade of his life in the United States, is mentioned 52 times in that correspondence. Joseph Priestley is a true father of our country that many of us have never heard of. So Priestley was uh, a... a, a a prophet somewhat because he, he uh, wrote this in the um, 18th century but he said the more elaborate our means of communication the less we communicate 
truer words could never be spoken. I don't know if he was talking about, you know, by ship going to Telegraph and Pony Express. I'm not sure what levels of communication he was talking about, but he understood that as we get more elaborate means of communication, can you believe that you can take this, and I, I think I said this a couple years ago, and, and you can use that thing called FaceTime and do a Dick Tracy, actually see somebody from far away. I mean, it's amazing. Some of you don't even know who Dick Tracy is, but... <laughs> It's amazing that we have this technology, but you know, oftentimes we don't we don't use it uh, profitably. Uh, I'm just starting on the invention of air. I understand Joseph Priestley was a master at collaboration, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. This uh, second quote, a little bit more about reconciliation. I'm going to read this whole quote. I think it's an outstanding quote from the Reverend Billy Graham. And I'm going to read it slowly, and I know you can read, but I just want for, for, for emphasis. He said, I don't believe that we should cut ourselves off from people with whom we disagree. I think we ought to talk to them, try to understand their point of view, and let them understand our point of view. There should never be this terrible division in which we don't even speak to each other. Again, something that sounds so fundamental, but so hits home. If we follow this law of relationship and we talk about communication and reconciliation, respect for individuality, respect from other respect for others' points of view, we have to get to this point. In in my position, I've met quite a few people in the last uh, couple of years and, and sat down with people of very differing uh, points of view. And you, you try to find some common ground. You can't always, but at least you can respect their point of view. So, real people with real character ultimately lead leads to real community. We talked about this a couple of years ago, but the, the law of unity. You know, we're all different, so it really is unity in diversity. An author I like to read a lot, is, uh, his name's Tim Keller. You know, Owasso has a great marching band, all right? Been to the Rose Bowl twice, always award-winning. Tim Keller talks about um, his marching band director uh, on the subject of unity and unison that marching bands are required to keep very uh, carefully. He said his marching band director said, uh, Keller, you can pick your nose as long as all 228 of you pick your nose at the same time. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but, you know, unity and diversity. There is a time where we all have to get in the same step. We all, once the decision's been made, we've all got to say, this is where we're going, this is how we're doing it. We all agree. There's, we're in America. Sometimes there's the opportunity to get off that team and get on to another team. But once we make a decision, there's got to be unity. On principles, collaboration and service. We're not going to talk long on this, but real people with real character really work together, really respect one another, really communicate to solve problems and serve others. They engage, they volunteer, they give, they serve. And I really want to emphasize this last part about um, service and um, I've got several quotes from great people that emphasize personal fulfillment in selflessly serving. It's my belief that we're designed to serve others. We're truly fulfilled in serving others. And I'll give you some examples in a moment. But these great people all believe that. Wonderful quote, Martin Luther King Jr. Not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. Dorothy Height. Has anybody in here heard of Dorothy Height? She's an amazing lady. She was a civil rights activist in the 60s. She was an educator. She was the 1994 Presidential Medal of Freedom winner, the 2004 Congressional Gold uh, Medal winner. Uh, Google her name and read about her. But I love what she said. Without community service... We would not have a strong quality of life. It's important to the person who serves as well as the recipient. It's the way in which we ourselves grow and develop. And finally, Leo Tolstoy, the great Russian novelist, one of the greatest of all time, wrote War and Peace, Anna Karenina. He, he, was a, he had a profound impact on both Martin Luther King Jr. and Gandhi. said, joy can only be real if people look upon their life as a service and have a definite object in life outside of themselves and their personal happiness. Now this is kind of a new concept to some in our day and age, probably not a new concept to most of you in this room, but a few more quotes. President Woodrow Wilson, no higher religion than human service. 
to work for the common good of the greatest creed. King George VI, the reluctant king of England, the highest of distinctions is service to others. Albert Schweitzer, the Nobel Prize winner, uh, the French-German uh, French philosopher, Nobel Prize winner. purpose of human life is to serve, to show compassion, the will to help others. And then finally, Mahatma Gandhi, who needs no introduction, and Jesus of Nazareth, both who need no introduction. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. It's what Jesus was talking about when he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Who des whoever desires to be great among you must be, uh, let him be your, your servant. So, a couple of those things just to drive home. So that's it. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about real people, real character, real community. Um, it's who we are. It's who we can be. I think it's what can make us unique in Owasso and what sets us apart. You know, we do this already. We do this already in Owasso and in the communities all around Oklahoma. But I think we do it really well here. Macy's has been mentioned a couple of times. I want to read from, uh, I don't know if you saw in the, in the uh, Tulsa World, an article uh, by Yolanda Charney, uh, David Charney's mother, uh, longtime Owasso resident and someone who's given a lot to our community. There, there's an article that quotes Terry Lundgren, the Macy's CEO, during the recent uh, building dedication. And Terry Lundgren, the Macy's CEO, said, you all work together so incredibly collaboratively. It's really quite unique. That doesn't happen in every state, in every community. It just doesn't. You should feel very good about that. That's why we are here. Mrs. Charney goes on and says, would that we could share this cooperation, this spirit of optimistic collaboration beyond Tulsa County. And, and the answer to that is, you know, we can. That's the bigger picture. We in Owasso are looked upon by the other suburbs as leaders, and we can share that spirit of collaboration. We were helped immensely by Tulsa County Commissioners, Tulsa Regional Chamber, the Cherokee Nation. I don't even want to start because there's a lot of people that work together to bring Macy's uh, to our area. But in our own community, pastors meet regularly across denominational lines and they work to support different justice causes to include the Pregnancy Resource Center, Owasso Community Resources, Open Table, Aruba Medical Clinic, John 316, Dividing Bread, it goes on and on. This is a little bit unusual for pastors to work so closely together and for so many churches to give to charitable organizations rather than using that money to do their own thing. That is happening all around Owasso. These wonderful volunteer charitable organizations that are helping those in need, and we have plenty of them in Owasso that, that are not able to help themselves, we're getting a spirit of cooperation and collaboration. Our Owasso Community Foundation is recently um, reorganizing, and some of the members are here. We've got Jerry Fowler, Chad Balthrop, Steve Catadella, Doug Bonebreak, Sherry Bishop. They will be here after handing out cards that say Owasso Community Foundation Equip, Fund, Inspire, an umbrella organization uh, that aspires to be much like the Kaiser Foundation, aspires to, to be great in meeting the needs of people who cannot meet their own needs. Helping the helpless, those who can't help themselves. Going on, some great examples. The Owasso Strong Neighborhood Initiative. Owasso Cares, Keep Owasso Clean. This is an organization that embraces fully volunteerism and service. I want to read uh, uh, an article by Owasso reporter, Tulsa World writer, Haley Smart. She recently uh, participated in an Owasso Cares Volunteer Day of Service and wrote this article on September 20th. She said, I've always listened to people talk about how good it makes them feel to give back through volunteering and now I understand. It feels wonderful to accomplish a common goal for the sole purpose of taking care of a place we all call home. It's a feeling not completely understood until you do it. This definitely won't be my last time. You know, I've been to several of those Owasso Cares days and the real beauty of those days is to see at the completion of two or three hours of work the young families that come, the mom, the dad, the seven-year-old and the eight-year-old, and those kids and those moms and dads are so excited because they did what? Because they 
did some big wonderful thing? Because they picked up some trash, because they painted a fire hydrant, because they helped somebody move a couch out to the curb, because they were involved in something service oriented, others oriented. So this, this concept of service we want to con- completely uh, embrace, sell, whatever we can do, um, but it, it's a brand for us. It's a brand for us. It's, it's something that we do well. So I'm going to move on to the second half. Switch gears here and talk about and celebrate some progress, some recognitions, some accomplishments. Uh, this is recently. Recently we were named the best suburb in Oklahoma to raise a family. That was uh, by an organization called Value Penguin. These organizations have funny names. Uh, we were ranked the number four happiest city in Oklahoma by Credit Donkey. <laughs> For cities of 20,000 or more, we were ranked uh, the the number four safest place in Oklahoma by a group called Niche. So that's a, that, it's neat to say, it's neat to see others saying good things about Owasso. A big deal for Owasso this past year, we were able to um, pass an additional one half penny sales tax. This was approved by 76% of those that went to the polls. This was a new half penny. And I can tell you, those of you who remember 2011 and 1994, funding initiatives didn't go so well. In fact, they, they uh, failed by about the same margin. But this new sales tax we passed um, uh, is dedicated to police, fire, and streets. So what we're able to do is develop a little bit of trust, develop a little bit more momentum, so that the people of Owasso say, we're going to reinvest in our community. We're going to support these things that we need. Just like we've always supported our schools through uh, property tax initiatives, we are going to support the things that we need in Owasso. The progress to date with this funding, uh, streets received exactly what our goal was, an additional $800,000 for street rehabilitation. You may know that a study was done in 1996 that said we need $1.6 million a year over the next 20 years. We'd been spending about $400,000. This year we're spending about $1.8 million. We've, we've been spending about a million. Now we've got an additional $800,000 So 1.8 million this year. Police, we've got seven new officers hired, looking to hire about five more. And the land has been purchased for fire station number four up on 116th. I've already mentioned, but of course, another big deal for Owasso is Macy's. Gosh, where do you start? You've heard all the statistics, 1,500 employees, over 2,000 seasonal workers, 14 miles of powered conveyor belts. Um, As we were going through the uh, facility, uh, a month or two ago, I, I can't remember if I was with um, Fred Barnes or with someone else, but the, the, we got to the shoe area. And the shoe area, if you can imagine a ceiling twice this tall and a room probably five times this big, that was the shoe area. And I, I said, gosh, can you imagine how many shoes they must stock in here? They stock between seven and 800,000 pairs of shoes that are ready to ship. So all of you ladies in the audience and some of you men... Um, It's estimated that this year during peak season, Macy's will ship 160,000 units a day. That's 160,000 pieces of product per day uh, out of that facility. The maximum capacity to design for that facility is 320,000 units per day. That's about, if my math's right, I don't know, Fred, but 85 million a year, and that's based on Monday through Friday. It might be more than that, but it's incredible. And what's more incredible, the next 10 years, economic economic impact on our area is expected to be about estimated at 800 million dollars. But more important than all that, Macy's has already jumped in to be a part of our community. They've already raised $30,000 for the United Way campaign. They've been involved in Race for the Cure. They're involved with the Cherokee Nation on numerous events, hiring events, things like that. They've adopted Fred Barnes, CEO, they've adopted Barnes Elementary. Um, I kidded him and said that we didn't name that school after him, but I think he's adopting it and kind of feeling, feeling welcome here. Another big deal underway. We talked about giving back a $50 million private gift to build a new campus. I, I'd love to tell the story, Dr. Shaw, but I didn't get permission ahead of time. But the story behind this $50 million gift, and uh, initially it was meant to be anonymous, and I won't go into the details but um, because I didn't get permission. But it's a great story. It's a great story. One of the largest, I believe one of the largest single gifts 
for a, a, a private education facility in the history of our country. You know, St. Francis of Assisi, who who uh, the Pope, I guess if you're Pope, you can take your name after one of the saints, but he took his after St. Francis of Assisi. It was St. Francis of Assisi who said, all getting separates you from others, all giving unites you to others. All getting separates you from others, all giving unites you to others. He was the one who also said, for it is in giving that we receive. Another great uh, thing going on this year and in the coming, probably it's going to take us another 24 months, is quality of life projects. This is a result of the Vision 2025 excess funding that has become available at the end of the Vision 2025 six tenths uh, additional countywide sales tax cycle. That sales tax will end in 2016, but Owasso is the beneficiaries of about $7 million that uh, will go for projects currently either in the planning or construction stage. And I'm going to read these off 76th Street and Main uh, Inter intersection improvements. Uh, it paid for the 19th and Garnett intersection improvements where the new Academy Sports is. Park improvements to include lights for the new fourplex at uh, the sports park, lights for the skate park, a, free, a feature spray park at the sports park, a new heart healthy 5k trail at the sports park, new shade structures and paved existing and additional parking at the sports park, a new Ranch Creek trail extending from the trailhead at McCarty Park and running south to 76 and Mingo near the Tulsa uh, Mohawk Trail uh, uh, connection. A new dog park at McCarty Park, a splash pad extension at Rayola Park, a new shelter at Elm Creek Park, and a new festival marketplace in the downtown area. So that's some uh, a big list of exciting projects that you may or may not know about. If you want to know more about them, you can click on thecityofowasso.com and um, find out a little bit more about those projects. And it's been one of the biggest years ever for new retail. How are we doing on time? We're late. Uh, one of the biggest years ever for new retail, right on the heels of Sam's and Sprouts and Hideaway. We've got Dairy Queen and FFO and AMC Urgent Care and Academy, and we're wrapping up here, but I've mentioned Rejoice, Taco Bell, Communication Federal Credit Union. And as those pop up, you're familiar with most of those. I, I want to mention some of the small local businesses, and there have been more than I can count, but I know these are chamber members. Uh, these are the lifeblood of our community, uh, of real community small businesses like Paint and Barrel, Bless Your Heart Boutique, Style Shack, Hapa Japanese Cuisine, Owasso Drug, Westerman Financial Services, others. So it's been a great year. They're still coming. <laughs> it's been a great year in Owasso. We'll continue to make decisions with real community uh, as our top priority as uh, Former Governor and President uh, Boren said every decision should be made with the goal of increasing community. Last year, I lastly now, I want to leave you with an easy challenge. There should be a business card of mine on your table if you want to grab that or something else. You don't have to do this, but my question is, how do we go about making a real difference with this real people, real character, real community concept? I'm going to ask you to do three things. They're very easy. First is meet someone. Meet someone in your daily traffic pattern. If you don't know your next door neighbors or your neighbor across the street, start there. Meet them. Find out their story. Everyone's got a story. You may need them some days. But in your normal traffic pattern at work, find somebody that you see all the time, meet them, introduce yourself, find out their story so that you can talk with them. Secondly, renew. We've all got someone that we say, I need to get together and have coffee with them or go to lunch with them. Renew an old relationship and you might need to restore an old relationship. We talked about reconciliation. We don't always get along. You know someone that you haven't gotten along with so well? Call them up, get together, restore a relationship. And then finally, serve. Find a way to give back. Volunteer, work on a committee or a foundation. Um, if you can't give your time, give your money. If you can't give your money, give your time. Uh, you know, you don't have to give $50 million to give back, and you don't have to give a kidney to give back. 
Those things happened in Owasso this year. They're wonderful stories. But you've got to start by meeting, by restoring a relationship, by giving back in a small way. Let me challenge you to do that. And I want you to start by helping me uh, serve some people uh, by saying thank you. I'm going to ask the city councilors to all please stand and the city staff and any family members of the city staff that are here. Would you please stand, city councilors, city staff. You can imagine before you applaud... Thank you very much. I was going to make them stand a little bit longer. There's not that many times that I've got you know, authority and control over uh, all those people. <laughs> not over all those people. Um, but um, as you might guess, uh, these people don't, they don't get enough thank yous. Um, the question was asked uh, earlier, you know, what about the election upcoming? And um, Councilor Bonebreak, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. I'm not going to put you on the spot. But, you know, nine years, he's coming up on nine years of service. And I said, you know, over that time, we've quadrupled his pay uh, during that time. Uh, four times zero is still zero. I learned that in math. But, you know, it's, it's a lot of giving back. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens there. But um, thank those people when you see them. So, Owasso, real people, uh, real character, real community. Together we can do this even better than what we're doing it now. We can be people of principle over people of privilege. And if I can help you in any way, if I can speak on any of these topics to your organization or talk about anything you want, um, I'd be happy uh, to do that. Thank you. And I've got, I had some time set aside for questions, but but uh, Gary was a little too long-winded. I'm sorry. Um, I do. Sorry. I do love these questions. These are both Yogi Bear. If you ask me anything I don't know, I'm not going to answer. And I wish I had an answer to that because I'm tired of answering that question. And uh, so I'll leave you with one last quote. Never miss a good chance to shut up. Thank you. Warren, I, I know that you will stick around if anyone does have that.